Thank you for inviting me to share our esophageal gastric cancer model with you. It's a shame I couldn't be with you in person, but I hope you'll still find this presentation useful. I'm pretty sure I know many of you, but just to quickly introduce myself, my name is David Chan, and I don't have many titles, but this is the one that I'm most proud of. I've been an upper GI consultant in Plymouth for almost five years now, and I've spent most of my adulthood living in Cardiff and training throughout the whole of Wales. I consider many of you my friends and I'm grateful to all of you who have really brought me up and supported me throughout my training. I hope I can help in whatever way I can to support your journey of centralization of services for patients with esophageal gastric cancer. Now, I was wondering why I was invited to share our cancer model with you. And initially I thought it was perhaps because I was partly involved with looking at the results of centralization in Southeast Wales back in 2010. And then I thought maybe it's because you knew Wales means a lot to me. And we even named our daughter Karis. It's a shame our chicken hasn't got a Welsh name. But I think it's mainly because our geography and population in the Southwest is kind of similar to South Wales. Now, I'm really not here to say how things should be done. I'm simply here to share with you what we currently do and some of the challenges we have faced in the past and some of our current issues. It's constantly evolving and we're always seeking to improve. I'm very happy for you to give me feedback on how we can do things better as well. I'll run through an overview of what we do at the central unit and how the peripheral units link in. I'll also go through a patient journey and some lessons we have learned. Now this is where we are in Dareford Hospital in Plymouth. We have about a thousand beds and there are currently seven surgeons on the specialist esophageal gastric on call, six of whom perform cancer operations. We have a great team of anesthetists trained in the use of double lumen tubes. We have three cancer nurse specialists who provide support to all OG cancer patients right from diagnosis through their oncological treatment and surgery and even the post-op follow-up. We have two oncologists and one gastroenterologist that performs EMRs. Any patient that needs an ESDs are referred to Portsmouth. We, the consultants, are on an annualized contract and we have access to all day theatres every day of the week. And over the last 18 months, we have had two extra robotic theatre lists. We generally reserve Mondays, Tuesdays and Fridays for cancer cases and Wednesday and Thursdays for benign or bariatric cases. Every week we run three endoscopy lists, three or four clinics on site, including uh, two virtual clinics. We provide specialist OG cover for the region 24 hours a day, seven days a week, split between the seven of us. Six of us are on the general surgery on call rotor as well. Now, I would like to emphasize the importance of a formal rotor, and we can be contacted via switchboard or a generic email to all seven of us if there are any issues from the peripheral units. Just like in Southeast Wales, we centralized back in 2010 and cover a population of about 2 million in the Southwest. Here's the latest NOTCA audit covering a three year period from 2019 to 2022. And we perform about 80 to 90 cancer resections a year, excluding guests, and with pretty decent outcomes. Our current median length of stay is nine days with low post-op mortality rates. This is the spread of mortality rates according to volume. And we are here represented by the red dot. You can see that we are the fourth highest volume center in the UK. Now this is the team of our of surgeons and here we are in our shared office. It can be a bit cramped but sharing an office makes it very easy for us to talk about things, bounce ideas and discuss any issues that can arise. This is from one of our weekly online meetings. We try and meet at least once a week for half an hour to an hour 
And I'll quickly introduce my colleagues to you. This is G, Lee, Grant, Arun, Richard and Tim. A special mention to Joe Rahamim, who has just announced that he's retiring after being a consultant thoracic surgeon in Plymouth for over 30 years. We also make it a point to meet socially every few months. Here are our lovely cancer nurse specialists, Marilyn, Jen, Lizzie, along with Amy, our dietitian, and Gemma left before this photo was taken. And they really hold us together. I'd just like to highlight a few of our current practices. All of our patients needing surgery are pooled and can be operated by any one of us depending on list availability. We are quite selective in our use of endoscopic ultrasounds and staging laparoscopies. Although we do perform routine cardiopulmonary exercise testing on patients being considered for surgery, patients are discharged onto level one bed instead of going to HD or ITU. We have stopped using epidural catheters and feeding jejunostomies for over 10 years now. We've been using paravertebral catheters placed intraoperatively and a PCA instead. Patients who require feeding preoperatively are usually done via an NG tube or a stent if absolutely necessary. If they develop an anastomotic leak, we tend to use TPN on the ward. We do not use routine contrast swallows and patients are drinking up to 100 mils of water per hour for the first three days and they will usually leave hospital on a liquid diet. Here are our four peripheral hospitals that feed into us. North Devon in Barnstable, Royal Cornwall Hospital in Truro, Royal Devon University Hospital in Exeter and South Devon Hospital in Torbay. Although these distances are from the hospitals themselves to us, the further someone has to travel is about 90 miles from Land's End uh, in Cornwall to Plymouth. Broadly speaking, this is what happens at the peripheral units, although there are some slight nuances with the different hospitals. The local clinician, which could be a gastroenterologist, physician or surgeon who diagnoses the patient will inform the patient of the diagnosis and arrange staging investigations with the support of the local cancer nurse specialist and the oncologist. They are then discussed at the local MDT with some specialist input. Any patients needing palliative care, either with stent or chemotherapy, are done locally. Those who are being considered for potentially curative treatment or there are any uncertainties will then be discussed at our weekly specialist MDT. We will then see these patients either virtually or face to face. And sometimes that can be combined with a cardiopulmonary exercise test as well. Following surgery, patients are seen or spoken to by us at the first follow up, normally a few weeks after surgery to discuss the uh, histology. And then they are followed up by the CNS locally. I'll take you through an example of a patient's journey. I've taken a snapshot of our online whiteboard software, which we are all very proud of, and it's written and run by Richard Beresford. All patients who are being considered for potentially curative treatment are entered into this online database and pretty much in real time. Because we pool all of our patients, this allows us to share and update any necessary information or discussion. It also helps with undertaking any audits or research projects as we can very easily pull the data from this software. So Andy has kindly agreed for me to use his case for this presentation. As you can see, he is 65 and presented with dysphagia and an endoscopy in October 2022 showed a distal esophageal adenocarcinoma. The endoscopist locally at Royal Devon and Exeter told him his diagnosis and arranged for his staging CT scans along with the support of the local CNS. He then met Richard Beresford 
at a video clinic on the 15th of November. And then Jenny Forrest, our oncologist covering Exeter and North Devon, a few days later. He had a good cardiopulmonary exercise test and then went on to start cross neoadjuvant chemo radiotherapy. Now, this is the history tab. As you can see, he is pretty fit. He used to work as a landfill operator and has a, a BMI of about 26. He underwent a robotic assisted Ivor Lewis esophagectomy on the 20th of February. The abdominal bit was done laparoscopic and the chest face was done robotically. Here's the complications tab and thankfully he did not suffer any complications and he was discharged after seven days. This is the pathology results. His final pathology was a T3 N0, 0 out of 43 nodes, R0 resection, TRG4. And he is currently undergoing adjuvant nivolumab. I'd just like to highlight some of our previous challenges that we've had. We centralized back in 2010 and we had a couple of in-reach surgeons who came to operate in Plymouth, but that stopped about after about three years. We were traveling to the peripheral hospitals, but after a year we realized that that really wasn't good use of our time. Over time, we've also realized that there was no need for a specialist surgeon at the local MDTs. Now, some dietitians or oncologists amongst you may not like to hear this, but I've worked in a few different cancer units around the country and feeding jejunostomies were the bane of my life. So when I started here in Plymouth, it was music to my ears to hear that it had stopped being used for many years prior to me starting. So what are our current issues that we're facing at the moment? I did mention that in general, we pool all of our cancer patients, but historically, Patients from South Devon were operated on by Joe Rahamim, who is retiring, as I've said earlier, and therefore we will be absorbing that workload. We are also in the process of training the local CNS in Exeter and North Devon to undertake follow-up clinics. In summary, I think it's essential to have a strong core centralized team who are easily accessible. The responsibility lies with the local clinician who will then seek out advice for managing these patients. We've learned that the in-reach and outreach model doesn't work for us and local surgeons are rarely involved. We have evolved the model over time and are still constantly evolving and expanding. Just to finish, I've put this up as a reminder about why we do what we do, and it's all about the patients that we serve. I'll never forget this, as this was a card from a lady who was my first esophagectomy uh, in Plymouth when I started back in 2019. And as you can see, the emphasis is on the team. Now, I hope you found this uh, short presentation useful. Please let me know if you have any comments or questions which you can leave in the comments box below. Thank you for listening and I hope to catch up in person in the near future.